are my next um, comment or question will be uh, on prayer. Prayer. Now I've read in the in the real far country about uh, the ionosphere uh, that reflects our thoughts and desires and back to us in an automatic manner and uh, in fact uh, what i understand is that except i'm i'm wrong is that uh, we'll get back exactly what is reflected back to us it's exactly what we what we projected into the ionosphere and in a sense, it seems like you reap what you sow. So then with this knowledge in view, uh, I think we become uh, some sort of creators of everything uh, through our concentration and focus of what uh, we want to do or what we want or something like that. So I want to ask you, with this kind of uh, uh, understanding, is there actually a need for prayer that is all over the place? Well, again, did the birds pray? So, um, you know, yes, it is. Uh, Rebazar describes how the different layers work in a reflection, and that shows you uh, we're in a bubble here. It's just a bubble and it all reflects. And so this is where people become self-convinced by the very idea that they can think of ideas. Uh, they can create thought. Yeah, they become creators. And, and many people think, oh, gee, well, you know, I could be like a god. I can create. Well, you see that with the governments and the people that rule the planet um that's what they're doing they're creating situations where they rule and take over others so they play the god roles and this is uh, what most people are subject to and it's very very real and so uh, but there are ways around this they cannot curtail your uh, real awareness unless you allow it and so that's something you decide with yourself uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, the thoughts are interesting. The prayer idea, again, <clears throat> that was created to get people to beg, okay, from others. Yes, yeah, so this is where the gods were created. And you, you see it all over. You see it, you know, why do people, uh, why is there a resistance or a rebellion or demonstrations? And again, and why are they demonstrating to a government that controls them? Because these people for lifetimes have been taught and rehearsed to beg. And that's what prayer is. It's just begging. And yes, we, we make petitions to life, you might say, and they are heard. Uh, sometimes the real guides step in or others or whatever. It just depends on what the person asks for. Of course, we all do that. <clears throat> and it's something that is, uh, you know, it's just part of our makeup. And we, we decide and we, we eventually figure it out. But to the point to where, uh, you know, we have this religious idea, because all religion is sacrifice. This has been the whole idea. You are to sacrifice yourself. That's the religious idea. But they, they doctor it up to make it look pretty like it's something that it's not. And it's really sacrificial. Again, do the animals and birds do this? And do they destroy their environment? But the people that sit and pray and worship and all these things, these are the ones that destroy their environment because they've been taught to do so. They've been taught to do that because this is the only way they can be controlled. And there are others that want to control them. So does do any of these systems here make sense? No, they don't. They really don't. And so, but again, it's up to each person how they decide to agree with them, etc. And I'm not saying 
no, we don't do rebel, rebelling and uh, bringing violence into it. No, that doesn't make sense at all. Again, life is awareness. It's an isness. So we've come up through these ideas. And uh, as we grow up here, uh, we go along with the social behavior of things because we don't know anything else. But at a certain point, you know, what makes sense? Look, just the sun shining makes more sense than what's going on with this world. So does it make sense to comply with this world when when individuals are, you know, they're they're given propaganda thinking that, oh, these these are bad people over here. You want to join the services and let's go attack them and, you know, we'll destroy them. So we have peace on the earth. It's always that idea to destroy something to have peace. And, and so, again, this world is like it is. It's not going to change. This uh, realm is not going to change. You're going to get little perks here and there, okay? And you're going to want to try to live a peaceful life. It's not about that. That's not why you're here. You know, it's just like a big classroom. You're in a big classroom. And it's not about, oh, gee, I, I want to just lay down and this is where I want to make my home. Well, you can. But someone's going to come along and kick you when you're trying to lay in the corner over there, the classroom. Some of the kids are going to make fun of you and throw uh, throw things on you or, or the trash can or something on you just, just to bother you, aren't they? Because that's how this world is. It's not going to change. You, We're not here to change the world. That's not the idea. We're here to recognize what we don't need and what makes sense from all of that to becoming more aware and recognizing what is real. And, and we need this experience. And the fast track is, is that the faster the individual figures it out, the better they are and they can get on with things. And you might say, do their part to earn their way, just like anything else, just like while, while we're in this world. So, uh, yes, Charles, um, that and a lot more. Again, the prayer idea, we've known this for lifetimes and it's still here because you leave this place. Look at all the people that have left this place thousands of years ago. Well, they're back. And the world's the same. You still have religions. You still have politics. You still have the spiritual past. You have all these systems, education. Now you have science and all that. Now they've come into this life. And, and it's all the same thing. You know, people think that only um, in church do they worship and pray. No, everybody is worshiping and praying creation. Uh, they're, uh, you know adamantly adoring creation and and all the thrills and sparks well that's fine i've never said it's bad it's not good or bad or whatever it's choice but the end result do you see where it's going you know people look at at what has been created thinking that oh we're better off we've got better cars we've got better roads whatever uh, no, it's not. Everything, everything that's been created a particular way, and it's been created a particular way so that it is a distortion. There's ways to create things that don't cause that, but it hasn't been done yet. And so trying to add to a system that's distorted, well, that's a toughie. It's not going to cure the system, and the system is not interested because the system's all about control. Everything has been established here for control. That's it. Not a better life not to make people happy or anything like that. No, it's all about control and it's disguised. So the praying idea, yes, anybody can do that. You can pray for things or whatever and you can have it. And it can, it can be so, it can work because it's, it's mind reflective, it's ideas. You know, just like when you create a document on your computer, it's in cyberspace and then you push the print button and, and, and all of a sudden there it is. It's in the physical. It comes around and it's a physical thing. It's a printed document. And so, you know, creating an idea and then making it into something physical and personal. Well, again, that's a choice. But you've been here how many lifetimes now that you can't even imagine? Do you want to keep doing the same things that you've always done because it will only lead to the same place? And that is you'll just grow old and you'll forget you were here. So to have a focus, like you were talking about before the fast track, is to learn to focus on the isness life is and to stand real with that and take the risk 
that's how you eventually free yourself from all of this. Otherwise, you just simply agree to it and it's a sound good idea, that's all. But prayer is a choice. And again, we've been subject to this like everything else. I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's choice. Everybody has the right to choose. Nothing is negated here. We don't negate anything. It's just simply choice. And you see what the world is choosing. And when you look into the real side, when you look in the back of the curtain, they're all just running into future darkness because it's only getting worse. You look at the last hundred years, and uh, like I've said, in uh, just the United States alone, we're here in the United States. Has it gotten better? Look at all the political speeches and all this stuff and all the so-called progress and whatever. You know, with all that, it's only gotten worse. It's never gotten better. It only appears to have gotten better. It appears that you've gotten a better job, Charles. But no, it's gotten worse. And it will continue to do so because this is how the system has been created. And the individuals that created it, they don't fully understand how what they've created gets worse. They're thinking in their minds, oh, we'll just take over. We'll control others and we'll make it all look good. But they don't realize that because of what they've created, it gets worse, not better. You may have a better job for a few moments. Oh, you make some money, etc. But you're still just growing old and to the point where everything in front of you just deteriorates and there's just more control, which we've seen especially in this lifetime since I've been here. I look at myself as when I was a child till now. Uh, you know, it's totally abrasive and it's getting more so every single moment. Yeah, so, so much for prayer. You can pray as much as you want. So now you understand how prayer works. It's a reflection of the individual's request. And really the individual has to decide to step up and do something about themselves, thinking that there are gods that are going to give them some kind of miracle. Well, again, uh, everybody's in their own thought form, self-convinced. That's what prayer becomes. It becomes a self-convinced position of a belief idea, you see. And that's these people are easy to manipulate and control. And that's why the system likes them for the most part. Yes, Charles, go ahead. Okay. Thank you for that uh, detailed answer. And uh, then uh, I would like you to talk about uh, uh, this uh, people who do mind control exercises and also try to and they try to blank the mind during uh, what they term contemplation or meditation in order to be present now, to be present here and now. And uh, it's some kind of emptying of the mind. So I want to ask what chance have this, these uh, people have of living in the Eastness lives. Well, everybody has a chance to do whatever. In other words, there's many there's many approaches to. Uh, it just depends upon what their intent is. So yes, there have been these uh, paths or teachings where you know you blank the mind, etc. The idea really is to offset. Uh, the cause and effect of karma. And so for the most part, these people are not aware that there are real universes where there is no karma. And again, life is an isness, it's here and now. The karma begins to, uh, you know, just uh, dissolve of its own as the individual becomes more aware of the real universes. And, and it's here and now, you don't have to travel anywhere. You have that experience, but really it's all, it's an isness. And so that's the original idea is just to offset the causes and effects because, you know, many of these people uh, in these different paths, Buddha, transcendentalism and all these things and, and the ones that I've come through, etc. cetera, too. Uh, the basic idea is cause and effect karma and getting off the, the so-called wheel of the 84 or whatever it is. Okay, the reincarnation wheel, etc. 
But as you become more aware, that becomes automatic. That's all. You're just simply aware. See, when most people go through this life and they step into the uh, the first part of the real side, you might say, usually into the astral world, they go from there and it just depends upon what they're aware of, okay? It's more than what you've earned so much. That's part of it too, but it's what you're aware of. So as people step over and they're aware of where they are and especially aware of the real guidance that's possible, okay, that's a plus factor because they can go with that. They can stand real with the real guides, but those people that are still uh, self-convinced and locked just into their personal self and have a lot of attachments to uh, situations and people and relationships that they've created here, well, again, they cannot go further than themselves because they actually hold themselves here. So eventually, if they don't move on, you might say, uh, or, or utilize what they've learned here, well, then they fade back is what they do. They fade back into this situation because it's about awareness and it's about holding that awareness and having that focus, you see? So it's like driving a car. You know, you have to stay awake while you drive it. You can't just fall asleep and expect the car to drive by itself because all of a sudden your hand or something will take it and turn the wheel and you're off the road. So you have to stay awake. So as you pass over from here, you know, most people have attachments and ideas to things, etc., uh, And that will bring them back and they will see their friends and relatives on the real side somewhere. And they will feel that, oh, you know, this is uh, OK, we're all together again, etc. But as so-called time goes by, they will just simply fade back into this position here. See, Charles. So, yeah. OK, Dan. Was there more to that question? Uh, <laughs> no, the. There isn't more because but I was just intrigued by uh, uh, looking at uh, the way to try to calm the mind, uh, be concentrated, focused, and uh, I think uh, that act enables uh, uh, one to to actually uh, step out on the real side and uh, uh, discover a lot of, of, of things about uh, one's own awareness. So I don't know exactly what, uh, what how, how to do it, but uh, the mind control exercises are a key factor of uh, uh, the spiritual and occult paths. So I don't know how successful they are with this, uh, but I find that uh, their method of uh, of uh, of approach through the mind, you know. Uh, the real awareness is addressing the real you, and uh, it is the real you that has to 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 govern all the five uh, bodies. So I was thinking that uh, based on the, anything that is based on mind control. Uh, mind stealing, uh, in order to live in the in the in the, in the, in the present now, uh, I think they are like artificial uh, artificial means of maybe uh, dwelling in the isness. So I don't know whether I'm, I'm wrong or just my own thought, Dwayne. No, it's part of it, um, Charles. Again, it's part of it, I understand. Uh, and we've all come through this. And yes, it makes sense. Yes, you, you might say you control your thoughts. We all go back and forth. We vacillate. And 
Also, we are the subject of our environment here. I feel it myself. I'm the effect of it too, and I'm affected by it. Yeah, and so we've all come through these things, and if the individual sees that this is an aid, they experiment with it, and it's all fine. Yeah, everything is fine, but the basic idea of many of these uh, these teachings as passes is that you reach a point, and it's called nirvana or the void, and that's the deep, dark border. And for the most part, the idea is, oh, you've conquered the mind. And what's interesting about this, uh, there's a movie called Doctor Strange, okay, which is really very good. And uh, it kind of demonstrates, uh, you know, it's an individual going through the process. And for the most part, what happens is, is that when people get to this point, not everybody, but some of them, they, uh, the, the temptation, you might say, of becoming either a white or a black magician is there because what you've done is you might say you've conquered the mind, you've learned to see how the mind works. And this is where the manipulators of the world, they see this. Uh, They've done many experiments on people through the ages, so they see how this works. And this is what they use, too. They use these different different ideas and ideals, etc. And so, but there's many ways to look at it. You see it as, uh, as, you know, like an apparatus, like an app on your phone but it's still not the phone itself. So there's your real awareness and these things at times, because the world's a busy place, so you can uh, utilize these things, but it's not the ultimate. That becomes the difference, Charles, you see. So yes, you can utilize certain things to help you along. You know, many things do. Uh, Each person figures it out for themselves and they're gently guided along. Again, what makes sense, but as an ultimate, no, it's not, you're just not blank. You just don't blank the mind and you walk around blank. Uh, you can, because you're really just a view, but also while you're here, you can also creatively do something. So many of these people, they just, they just go away. They, they go on a mountaintop or a cave somewhere and they kind of hide from life. Well, that's not the idea. The whole idea is, is that to stand real, this is where you eventually recognize yourself as a free being, a real light. You stand real with all the other beings, etc., because that's real survival. And so you support others as they support you. Now, here in the personal sense, this can be uh, kind of misconstrued, and that is, is that, no, we're not here to support the world and, uh, you know, uh, save the world from itself because me, people are making choices. But just as we do here as the worldwide educators, those people have stepped up. We support each other. We share a reference to the real universes. That's what that's the best we can do here because of how things are how, how things are here in the real universes. It's different here. We have the bodies and the personal self to deal with. We have our personal lives, etc. And we have to deal with a lot of agitation all the time. And it's a tough place to survive. So it's different here. It's really in the real awareness and the focus. So again, these things are something that can be utilized, but it's not the ultimate because recognizing your real awareness and especially the all is the real universe is that's really what life is about life is about itself not what we think it's about life is about itself and when you learn to recognize what life is and stand real with that well then you have your real freedom because then you're standing with other uh, free beings of real light you see that's beyond all the five bodies itself so, yeah, but to recognize that, that's huge. But in the meantime, people play with ideas here, thinking that they've got something. Well, like I was saying, for the most part, you just grow old, you pass over the astral worlds, you've got certain ideas, and basically that's where you are because you're self-convinced. And then for the most part, you're going to have relationships or whatever, and you're just going to come back. So you go through these things. They're not the ultimate they're just a reference to something that can possibly uh, help you along 
etc but it's going to it's going to go back and forth it's going you might say it's going to vacillate it's going to transform constantly because of how the isness life is i like looking at this every moment and this is where i decide to either do a picture with eva or write something it's it's in the moment of what's taking place uh, we're not setting up a, a system here or a program. That's not the idea, uh, et cetera. No, uh, or a doctrine uh, to go by. These are references, and they will transform into something better or uh, more so with the natural environment uh, on all levels, you might say. That's the best part of it. There's no restrictions. So, again, we've come to uh, think in terms of absolutes just like most people think that they're a physical body and that's it see that's an absolute and that you know many people think of well god is the almighty there's a god that's almighty and all-knowing that's an absolute well those are created ideas in creation and there are no absolutes in creation they only appear to be absolutes and in when you self-convince yourself with these ideas, well, guess what? You're stuck in them. The real universe is endless, and it's all alive. It's an all aliveness where you know. Again, we know that the uh, creation is a simulator, and so what takes place in creation is a particular, but it's not the true reality. But it can uh, act as a reference. Okay, that's the whole idea because we do need creation until we don't that's the fun part